Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Man, We're Too Old for This, here on the Nerd Turtle Network. I'm your host, the experience that some call Jason, and with me today is... The blurred Don of the Ville, the Todd Father, CDL113, the droid you're looking for, and the token millennial, Tarky. And today we're going to be talking about the first two episodes of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, as well as the first three episodes of Invincible. So be forewarned, there will be spoilers. And also, before we get into it, be reminded, we have a shop. Nothing! You can go to thenerdathome.com, we have the little shop button up in our menu. Anything you buy helps us get better at what we're doing, helps us buy better equipment. And if you can't do that, please like, share, or subscribe, especially when you're on YouTube, because that helps and it's free. Yes, just any way you can help is deeply appreciated. But getting on to Falcon and the Winter Soldier, who wants to start us off? So I'll start us off. All right, go. Um, I mentioned this to you when, before we started recording. Uh, my wife and I, Jennifer, we've been watching the first. We watched the first two episodes, and my wife, she only knows the two characters from the movies, and. Uh, she, you know, when we watched the uh, WandaVision, she really didn't care for it too much. I mean, especially the first two episodes of it. But afterwards, she was kind of like, eh, you know, it was a good show. But when we started this one, she was hooked from the get-go. You know, it was like, oh, this is a good, you know, spy movie. And, and I said, yeah, basically it's going to be like a six, seven episode, you know, spy movie. And so... She really liked it, and for a non-comic book nerd to say that, that ought to say a hint and a half about how good the show is. Mm -hmm. and, well, uh, it's like watching one of the movies. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Jennifer really likes spy movies and horror movies, so for her to watch this and go, "Oh, this is a spy movie," that you know, I knew she was hooked from the first episode, mm -hmm. and by the time the second episode rolled around and we watched it, she was invested. You know, normally if we watch something nerd related, she don't ask me any questions about a character's backstory or why they would do this. You know, with this one, she was asking me, well, why was that character important? Who was this? And, and why did they do, you know, so I knew she was invested. So if you've got a, a girlfriend, spouse, boyfriend, significant other, and they start asking you questions like that, yeah, that ought to be a, a, a clue that it, it's a good show. And uh, I really like the the play-by-play uh, -play between the two main characters. It's, it's like, you know, they took that energy they have from real life and put it on the screen. Well, they've got, they've got some, you know, they got some, like, chemistry there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a TV show of, of the one MCU movie that's almost universally liked. Yeah. It's Captain America, the Winter Soldier, the TV show. Yeah, it's very much in that. It's it's very much got that well spy thriller kind of vibe to it that uh, that the second cat movie had. See, for yeah. me, the start of this one was the worst to me. Like, I just I just couldn't get into it until it was like character interactions. Hmm. Just because it had the uh, the Disney problem too quick when it came to violence, and it got me annoyed at the start. What is because he's on a he's. So Falcon is on a military mission with a military objective against people he knows are committing murders. And he doesn't kill them on first engagement. He waits until they're in a nice explodable helicopter and then explodes a helicopter with him without really giving a crap. When he could have just had Red Hawk shoot them. Red Wing. Sorry, Red Wing. Shoot. I didn't really care. <laughs> He could have just had his little robot shoot them because he had no problem exploding the helicopters they were in, killing them anyway. But he couldn't actively kill them on, like with blood and face to face. But then you go to the flashback with Winter Soldier and you can do whatever you want because he's the bad guy. He can commit murders, but it's like it just bothers me so immediately because Falcon shouldn't have a problem with this. Falcon is ex-military. Falcon understands sometimes you got to kill a guy. And he's been using and it pistols shows since his first it. appearance. 
I'm sorry, what? He's been using pistols since his first appearance. Yeah, like, and then suddenly he's he doesn't have a single gun. He's just having to rely on Red Wing for every munition that is fired. Yeah, that did surprise me that he wasn't packing his pistols. I don't mind it because it makes it more like the book. Yep. Falcon ain't a shooter. And the thing is, this is the first time that you saw Falcon in something that even approached a superhero costume. Yeah, yeah. When oh he yeah. The... Out of that, he's 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 the sparkly, flashy superhero. He's not all the other times. Even when he was with the Avengers, it was still basically the military gear or a stark upgrade of the military gear. Yeah. It wasn't. Hey, I'm a superhero. Oh yeah, I like the look. It's just you you can't throw him into a version of himself that is so wildly different than everything you've seen and expect me to sit there and just go, oh yeah, he's given up guns for no discernible reason whatsoever while operating with the military. That's clearly a thing he'd do. I was sitting there the whole time going, oh, somebody's, somebody's changing their methods because they're, cap- they're going to end up Captain America and, you know, Cap only caps it- people in like the first movie except he doesn't change his methods he still murders them just with explosives instead of bullets yeah but it's marvel you can do that with you can do that with explosives it's it's yeah that's it's, it's six and one half dozen of the other but i see why they did what they did you're also the first person in creation that i've heard that said i like that first 10 minutes that's usually the part that everybody likes yeah it's like yeah i like when he's flying around with explosions and then when they get into the talky stuff i almost go to sleep well, no, I like. I was just tired of it because I was just like, they're they're firing guns at him. He's military, and you're telling me he's gone into this. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna not gonna have a single weapon fireable except for my robot, and then I'm gonna lose the hand to hand combat and let them es- and and then they try to escape in the air, which makes no sense. You know the dude has giant bird wings. Well, like you like- know the dude has giant bird wings, and you just beat him three on one. You just kill him. You wouldn't try to leave to this place you know he has an advantage in. You'd just kill him. Like, it was just, it was a nonsensical startup for me that just frustrated me. I could get the gun thing being jarring, though I'll admit I didn't even notice it. I just liked the neat stuff he was doing with his wings. Yeah, because you guys came at this from, you wanted to see some superhero stuff. I came at it from, huh, that's where the Falcon is operating completely different from how he has operated every other time I've seen him in the MCU. See, that was what bothered me with him on the Avengers in Civil War was he was dropping bombs on people and shooting them because I was like, well, damn, that's... Damn. Yeah, that is not a that is not a comic Falcon thing to do. But that's the thing is, they made him that way. Falcon thing to do, which is Truthfully, who he's always been based on. Ultimate Falcon was the dude that was a soldier that had the, you know, that had the wing harness and all that. Yeah, that he's he's always been more Ultimate Falcon than anything. Look, personality, backstory. He he is very, he is the least six one six person around there. Yeah. And the startup with Winter Soldier, I also was just kind of like somewhat frustrated about because like it seemed from the movies that he had un he had gone over some kind of psychiatric therapy in wakanda and then it cuts to this and it's like he's just not dealt with anything see to me wakanda just got rid of the brainwash yeah. he got rid of the trigger words and stuff like that but that that part of him that was in Civil War when uh, Tony goes, do you even remember what you did? And he goes, I remember every single one of them. The nightmares and stuff like that, yeah, I, I can't see getting rid of the brainwashing, getting rid of the memory. Yeah, right, but like, in the scene where he, you, the few moments you see him in Wakanda without an extra arm, he, he's just a dude there. He's not, you don't see anything resembling any kind of, Stuff until like the arm shows me, so like, ah, oh, the 10 seconds the between two, yeah, it's a 10 second thing, yeah, 
Yeah, it's and they a short... for shit. All you, the only thing they let you know, because the first time you see him unthawed is in Black Panther, and he basically goes, you helped me. That was it. And then in Infinity War, he's throwing the thing, who have I got to fight? And then he shows up, goes, uh, how about a hundred, a hundred year old uh, f- former assassin? And then he goes, see what's going wrong and disappears. He ain't, he ain't got a shit ton of lines. Yeah, no, no. The thing with, that I, I picked up on, it was like in Wakanda, it, to me, that was like he had a surgical procedure. And then this is the after effect. He's got to have, you know, therapy. therapy to get over what happened. You know, he had been had an injury, which was the brainwashing. Then he had uh, a surgical procedure, which was the removal of the brainwashing. And now he's in physical therapy after his procedure, which happens to be mental therapy. But he's having to deal with the fallout and aftermath of all those actions that he took while under that brainwashing. Yeah, it, so that, those are the sort of scar, mental scars that take a long time to get over. Yeah, and the thing is, he's he's that on top of basically still having Steve's story. Yeah, Steve's thing was, I'm a man. I'm I'm from the '40s. I'm walking around in the hell. In Bucky's case, 2026. Yeah, and in Bucky's case, at least in Steve's, he was frozen and just gone. Bucky was frozen, thawed out, murdered some people, refrozen, thawed out, murdered some people. So when he when he goes, yeah, I'm 106, but I ain't been in nothing but fights for 90 years. You ain't gonna be normal. I mean, you you just ain't gonna be normal from that. Well, yeah. I can give you a perfectly real world example. My dad served in Vietnam, and he never went. And you know, like when they got home, a lot of those veterans faced backlash. My dad didn't get any. Uh, mental counseling about what he went through and had to do in Vietnam until about four years ago. And he's still going to these veterans meetings and talking with a therapist to help him deal with that stress. Those kind of scars carry with you. You know, my dad was an artillery. And so when they would call in a fire mission, he wasn't killing just one guy with a rifle him by himself. He was killing groups of people with an artillery round. And he carries that weight on his soul. And think about Bucky. Like Todd said, he was thought out. for So for 90 years of his life, all he did was go kill people that he sees face to face. Yeah, that he needs some, some uh, therapy. There needs to be some weight to that. Yeah. And I thought so, they did a good job of putting, giving that some weight. Yeah, yeah because... The thing is, when you, when you look at that first episode especially... Is the both halves are dealing with veterans. Falcon's thing is he's the veteran that comes home from war that his money's funny. Because you have a lot of your homeless people are veterans. Mm-hmm. Bucky is the one that comes home and his head ain't right. And that's the hell, that's literally just what that was showing. It was one, his finances are screwed because hell, he truthfully been gone for five years. Yeah. And his finances are shady. Uh Bucky's thing is hell. He sees the people he killed at night. When you think about that, he knew how it started. Yeah. And smoked it. Oh, he got to, that's some shit you got to carry around that hell. I murdered a friend of mine and I couldn't do shit to stop it. You ain't going to be right. No. You just ain't. Well, it, it with, with, for me, when I watched it and he had his little pocket list, Work like Steve had a pocket list, but it was happy things that he needed to go back. Yeah, and say, hey, you mm-hmm. need to watch. Where Bucky's was all all list of names of people miserable. that he needed to make amends yeah. to. And it's like that's just you know, hell, the twist where he was, where you find out that the young guy he smoked in his dreams was that old man's son. Yeah, that was that was good and fucked up. Yeah, because it's like because I when I when they started that I was like, oh, he hangs out with this old man. Because that's the only person he can find that's close enough to his age that they could kind of relate. Yeah. I was thinking maybe it was somebody from the neighborhood that he knew. Yeah. But it was it was one of them kind of things where I was like, and even when the dude brought up his son, I was still sitting there thinking, oh, this may be something that Bucky will get on to to kind of help his friend out. I, had, I, it, I literally did not click that that was who he killed. 
until he went until to I saw the pictures, and, and then I was like, "Oh, that's fucked up." See, now that one clicked with me as soon as the old man started talking about his son. Yeah, as soon wrong as the place, old man spoke in Japanese about like they could never, they could never give me a reason or like the explanation of how he died. I'm like, oh, it was Bucky, hundred percent Winter Soldier murder right there. But uh, I, I liked how they dealt with both things and how Todd mentioned like Falcon, his money was funny. You know, he's going in trying to get a business loan with him and his sister to, to keep the family business alive. The bank manager, I just wanted to reach in the screen and punch him because it's like, here you are sucking up to him so you can get a, a selfie and an autograph, but yet he's an Avenger and a veteran who's known yeah. and you won't give him a chance. I mean, that, it's not like, well, I can't trust him. ate up a shit ton of time just on the first episode because the bank loan part was where online a lot of people go, oh, they didn't get it because of racism. And I was like, eh, I think that's more of a veteran thing. I said, but don't worry, you get to whine about that later because, yeah, now the thing in the second episode with the cops, yeah, that was a race thing. Yeah. That was, it's a black guy shouting at a white guy in the middle of the street. The black guy is obviously at fault until the partner comes up and goes, hey, stupid. That's the foul. Yeah. And then it's, oh. Yeah. Well, then it goes, oh, you ain't, you know, you better than the average so-and-so. And the game phase changes. Yeah, yeah. But as, as far as the second episode, I did love having them with Isaiah Bradley. Yep, the only thing I didn't like about Isaiah was he was old. Isaiah yeah. should not have been old. Not, not if he's super pumped up on serum. Now, my question about Isaiah is, they talk about him, them sitting in, in, the, in the Korean War. So does that mean they're rolling his origin back to Korea? Yeah. Uh, what, what I'm getting from Isaiah is, you know how in the MCU up until this point, you kept having Super Soldier Serum pop up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he's where they were getting it from. Uh, so when it popped up in the Incredible Hulk, yeah, that was, in fact, Incredible Hulk, that's an Easter egg, because when you look on the canister, it says Dr. Einstein, if you go back and read Truth, Red, White, and Black, one of the doctors that worked on Isaiah, yeah, that was his name, it was Einstein. Oh, okay. That was an Easter egg for the truth way back then. Yeah. And I'm, that's, that's where you keep having the serum show up because as far as the batch that Steve got, remember, that's what they were wanting to do to him because it was like, yeah, I was promised a troop of super soldiers. I only got you. You ain't enough. You're going to Amagordo, and they're going to experiment on you to see if they can't basically get a serum out of it, which meant they didn't have any. But yet it's popped up in the Incredible Hulk. It popped up in Civil War where they get it from. This answers where they got it from. Yeah, they got it from experimenting on Isaiah. Now, how long was the Korean War after World War Two? It was in the fifties, I think. Was it? Okay, so not that long. Yeah. <clears throat> when he talked about you know them putting him in jail, which you know it's still basically straight out of the book, but I was wondering if them using him in some of these other wars might be one you know when they let him out or why they let him out. But they doubled the length of time. In the book, he was in jail for 17 years. In okay. the show, he was in jail for 30. Uh, but yeah. Him was, being was, old, I don't have a problem with since you've seen an old Steve. Yeah, Steve was 200. Steve was Yeah, from the that 40s. first 100 ain't really going to count because he was frozen. Yeah, Steve was in the 40s, lived in the 40s. Lived to, was unthawed all the way to 2025, went back to the 40s, and lived all the way back. Yeah, you're 200 fucking years old. Yeah. You should be old as hell. Yeah, but most of that was frozen where you wouldn't be aging anyway. Which is why he looked like he did. That's what Todd said. He went into the ice and looked this way. When they thawed him out, he still looked yeah, the same. Yeah, he was 100. He lived... X number of he years wasn't aging in that hundred years, though. Well, no, he aged in that second hundred. He did. Yes, that's the same period of time Isaiah was living through without being frozen at any point. 
Yeah. No, if one of them was old, both of them should be old. Isaiah ain't 100. Isaiah looked like an old man, Steve. Uh, Yeah, Isaiah would be about 70-ish. Even if they took Isaiah and said, hey, we're going to experiment on you, you know, in the in, in Tuskegee back in the in World War II, that might be why he looks like he does and ain't yeah, up all when he died. All of that is me. Old. All of me talking about his age is if he if he was from World War II. Yeah, because like Papa served World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. He died when he was ninety six years old, and he looked like a ninety six year old man. I mean, he was hunched and crunched over. Where Isaiah is still, you know, fairly. Virile for a guy his age. I mean, when he looked at them and said, "Get out of my house before I whoop your ass," I believed he could do it, and I think Bucky did too. Because it's like, you ain't fighting. Well, yeah, Bucky might also be doing that because he's an old man. But uh, yeah. I actually had somebody at work this morning or last night. Uh, I forget how we brought up the show, but he just looked at me. Are they doing the Young Avengers? Because he, he watched it. And when he saw Patriot, he knew who, you know, or excuse me, yeah. when he saw Isaiah's grandson, he was like, I think that's Patriot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, impre- that, I was impressed was... with his comic knowledge. Yeah. That, that's literally the reason why you got Isaiah was they were doing Young Avengers. Because other than that, their timing for bringing up the Tuskegee experiment is bad. Yeah. Also, Black people take the vaccine. Hey, are you watching Marvel? You know how he got his stuff? It was a Tuskegee experiment. It was, his story is based off of that. Want to go take a shot? No. No, I don't. No. Also, one thing I want to point out, and just my utter hatred of the new Captain America, is when he said that he had 20-20 vision and then winked directly at the camera. When one, I guess it was supposed to be released in 2020. So like maybe it fits somewhat comedically, but the year is twenty twenty six where they are. Yeah. So like saying twenty twenty vision and then weak winking makes no sense. Yeah, I just thought that was. I hadn't even picked up on that. I mean, I remember him saying it, and I thought he was just winking at Falcon or something. But yeah, I thought that was just him being an ass. Now yeah. I like the I like the little scene where Battlestar fell off the uh, vehicle. And is like, you know, surprised when he's okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's one of those kind of things where uh, something that's kind of neat that I didn't get a chance to talk to you about, but I remember you going, you were hoping that the power broker was going to be in this. Yeah. And you got wish. Yeah. Yes, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Oh, and I I'm fully also... expect Walker to get juiced up at some point. If he isn't already. I think Walker's lying. Walker did. Walker Battlestar did better against uh, the Flag Smashers than Bucky did. You know Bucky's ass was juiced up. But uh, I don't know. I, I suspect that he's not. I suspect that he's going to decide that he ain't cutting it like he is, and then get juiced up once they're aware of the power broker. Yeah, I think I think the gov- considering the government already had access to that shit because Ross gave it to Blonsky. Yeah, I think he's juiced up. I think they just lying. Oh, he he scores. He's you know he's the peak human, and he's this. Yeah, I think that's just a lie. Cause hell, you ain't wanting to just flat out go. Hey, we make super soldiers. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, dude, you saw the video of him throwing the shield. That weren't a natural speed to throw that shield. Well, the shield's on about, his own. But you know, he's talking about he's faster than normal. He's smarter than normal. He sees better than normal. Oh, all this is yeah. It's cause his motherfucker's juice. Yeah, yeah, it's always possible. But also. That brings me up to another, the other angry point of the combat. You, you see them get gunned down. Like, you saw the one empowered human get gunned down because bullets still hurt them, despite mm-hmm. them being super soldiers, because that's not what, you know, super soldiers are still susceptible to bullets. Well, they, they're, they, they're, they, whatever formula they're using may not be up to snuff. Right. But what I, well, I mean, it has to be somewhat equivalent just because Bucky's, Getting beat in the fight. Well, you are, and the trick is the power broker in the comics. He ain't related to Super Soldier Serum. He came up with his own thing. Yep. Yeah. But what I mean is, like, they're susceptible bullets, and now instead of two ex-military people fighting, there's four people military trained fighting, 
and none of them are using a gun. It's comic books, man. Yeah, yeah. I get, I got like right, but like the MCU has had mul- has had half the characters that are in this fight use use weaponry openly. Well, it just, Bucky's it, under the thing where he can't he can't hurt anybody, which when he, how he lost his fight, I thought okay he's holding back because he's afraid he's gonna kill somebody. Yeah, he, he can't hurt anybody. He can't do anything illegal. He ain't sanctioned, so if he goes there and busts caps in folks, that's the end of his party. One's Captain America, who is yeah Captain America can't show up busting shots in people. Battlestar is essentially the sidekick, so that's Robin, so you can't have him cut through busting caps in people. And Falcon is on his hero shit, so it's the hero shit going. It's the hero shit and parole. Yeah, but you had one pull a gun and then just... Like, that was that was it, though. It was like, he obviously pulled a weapon. He pulled a gun. Why wouldn't he just start with that? Like for for me, it's just the efficiency of combat is ridiculously low, and it bo- it always bothers me in these things where it's like these people You're are trained with the weapons. Final cut of Justice League because everybody there does the absolute maximum damage they can do in any given situation. All right, moving on to our other topic. You the wall hard enough that you see blood splatter. We're gonna move on to our other targets. Obviously, we can chew on this one all day. I think we all agree that we're looking forward to seeing where Falcon the Winter Soldier goes. Yes. But let's move on to our other comic adaption for TV or streaming, however you can it. And on to Invincible over at uh, Amazon Prime. Now, I... me and Taylor have read a Taylor's read all the, you know read the entire series. I've read probably the first half of it. And I know Todd and Danny, y'all are going into the into Invincible. Old, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're vaguely aware of the character, and that's about it. Yep. I knew who it was when I saw him. I knew his dad had turned out to be a bad guy, thanks to I think it was Wizard Magazine. I had no idea the dude was half Asian. I was oh, like, yeah. oh, half Asian, neat. So yeah, starting man. off with our two uh, noobs, what did y'all think of the first three episodes? Just overall, I enjoyed them. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was neat as hell. It 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 really got me into. I thought it was going to be like uh, kind of like DC animated movies, violent. Yeah, but I didn't figure it was going to be the horror fest that that first episode ends with battered brains and. Eyes exploding and shit. Yeah, I, that one. When that started happening, I was like, "Oh shit!" That mm, that didn't see that coming. Shit. Yeah. When in the first episode, when you've got the two blue alien or blue, whatever they are, the two Mahler twins, twins. Guys, the Mahler twins. Yeah. Yeah. When when they show up and they start pulping folks at the White House, I'm like, "Oh, this is not a Saturday morning cartoon show for the kids. This is for adults." You know, I'm like. Damn. And, you know, see, to me, them, that scene was really no rougher than if you watched, uh, oh, hell, uh, Death of Superman. Doomsday and that was, you know, beating people in the pools, but it was kind of far off, so it wasn't. Well, this you actually get to see, though. That's what, you know, because, like, when he sh- when they're, sh- you know, getting shot at, they're like, <laughs> and they're blowing people into body parts. I'm like, oh, and then when you start seeing superhero fights, it's like, oh sweet Jesus on a bicycle. I mean, like I said, I ain't, I ain't, I didn't catch the ultra violence until Omni Man. Yeah, Omni well, Man up, did not play up until the end scene with Omni Man and the Guardians. It wasn't much more violent than the DC straight to video stuff. Yeah, and well, that stuff, yeah, that I, stuff I is not made for kids. DC releases their kid stuff on regular TV. And then for yeah, the adult movie. fans, you have the, you know, Justice League dark stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... But, all right, Taylor, as somebody that's read the book, what did you think of it? Um... Well... I like I no. like how they had the startup be basically the same with how 
Invincible figures out his powers. Because mm-hmm. just accidentally throwing a trash bag 3,000 miles is just funny. Yeah. Uh, the Omni-Man fight, I appreciated that they made it look reasonable. Yeah, that, I, I, I did like the fight. The toned it down the... was uh, very nice of them. I'm sad that Immortal... Or, I don't think Immortal got to say his line, did he? No, no. Oh, he would just scream why he did this. Yeah, I I wish Immortal had said his line. I don't think Immortal is crotchety enough in the show. Not yet, no. Maybe when he... If, if he comes back. But no, like... I, don't think, I think it, this show got like an eight... I think it's an eight uh, episode run. So you have five more weeks of it. Okay. Because in the, in the comics when the massacre is happening, Immortal tells him straight up, I always hated you. And he, and he says that, that before they reveal that it's Omni-Man. He says that, you see a, you see a swoosh, and his head rolls off, and you got Omni-Man sitting there covered in blood. Yeah, the feeling was mutual. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had to go and look up the Immortal later. Yeah. So it was Abraham Lincoln he was taken out. Kind of, yeah. Which I think started off as a joke. People was talking about him looking like a buff Abraham Lincoln, and then he, Kurt Man ate a cannon. But, but uh, and the gist of the character was he was supposed to be basically one of Earth's stoutest heroes. You know, a st- stoutest native hero, anyway. So he's Krillin. Um, Tian Shin Han's technically stronger than Krillin. Yeah, yeah. But anyway. Krillin's probably the fish guy. See, I liked I liked the fact they let everyone lay some damage on Omni Man. Because even yeah. the speedster, while breaking his hands down, you know, to bloody bone, was, was visibly still, injuring him. Yeah, was tearing the suit and doing some damage. Well, it, it's one of those physics things that if, if you sit and poke the same spot, you know, you know, eventually you're gonna wear down that spot. You may break your finger doing it, but you know you're going to make a, a, a damage. Because I mean, look at the steps at the Great Wall of China. They they're bowed where all the generations of feet going up and down the steps have been mm-hmm. in the same spot. Yeah, you know, there's a big worn area. By the and same so token, you hit a brick wall with your fist going hundreds of miles an hour. Yeah, you're yeah, not going to be able to take break. a second punch. Yeah, your your fist is going to give out before that wall. Yeah, but you know, we're dealing with superpower, so physics kind of goes. You know. Physics yeah, takes some LSD know. before that process even starts. I really, I really like the fact that hell, he, I got every impression that he was letting him get licks because it helped with his alibi. Quite possible. Yeah, yeah. Because you know he, he's beat up all to be damned. Well, it's obviously it wasn't me because hell, the things that took them out beat my ass. Yeah, beat you know beat him into a coma. Yeah, beat his ass. But uh. His arm was fucked up. You know, he was he was fucked up in that hospital. Yeah, I did like Demon Detective. I hope yeah. they do with him what they did with him in the book. Oh, I hope they do that. Because in the book, he figures out it was Omni-Man. But by the time he figures out and goes and tells anybody, yeah, the world already knows because of some stuff that went down. <clears throat> I, I know nothing about the, the boss that, you know, teleports from point A to point B and has the messed up face. Cecil? Yeah, Cecil. But the the actor doing the voice work for him, I like how he handles character. He's a good character actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he was doing a good job. Uh, he, he's he got a sitcom on CBS where, you know, he's the dad. It's called, the, the name of the show is called The Unicorn. And he's just this, you know, happy-go-lucky dad, you know? Cecil but, is not happy or go-lucky. On some of the movies he's been in, he's or shows he's been in, he has been the asshole. He's been an assassin. He's been a he's crazy like a racist. racist or a racist or a lunatic. He's got range. That yeah, yeah, he's range. got range. Like I said, he's a great character. His, Whatever his character name is, is, his name is Walter Goggins. The first place I ever saw him was The Shield. He was Shane. No, he wasn't Shane. He was one of Vic Mackey's team on The Shield. Yeah, he was a racist asshole on that. He was in the movie Predators. He was a racist asshole in that. 
Uh, he was the bad guy in, uh, well, he was the human bad guy that was trying to steal the shit in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah. Did you he, never figure out who in the hell he's working for? He's, yeah. uh, he got really big teeth. He He's the assassin. I, think that was, I thought he, I thought he was the one that played Shane. Yeah, 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 you're right. Okay. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he was Shane. But, uh, I just hope, <laughs> the trick is Cecil will have funny moments. Like one time he's talking about the fact that it costs, you know, I forget how much money it costs the taxpayers every time he teleports. And he just uses it all the time. At one point he's like, I think I'm addicted to it. <clears throat> Dang. Because it's like a new technology when he pops up with it in Invincible and he like really enjoys it. I like the alien. Alan. Alan. Alan the yeah. alien. Yeah, I like that. Al- Alan like the that. alien is a character that if they keep going on, does reappear. Yeah, he becomes a fairly major character. I like I like the Alan one because hell I thought they got a damn good voice to do with Seth Rogen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that, that was fucked up. The fact that he was he'd been coming to the wrong damn planet. Yeah, Urath. to test to test their champions. <laughs> I, I like the fact that you know Omni Man normally goes up there and beats his ass. Invincible goes up there and is like, hey hey, can we talk for a minute? Well, yeah, I love him. Yeah, but he he outsmarted the dude. You know, no, like, he didn't. He no. he literally stumbled into that shit. He was getting his ass beat, and he's like, oh, and he's like, oh, are you using it in timeout? Okay. And he stops. If he'd been some kind of genocidal something, Invincible's ass been dead. Yeah, that's true. That wasn't some great, oh, I got this plan. And no, he stumbled into that yeah. shit. Which is fine for a rookie hero. That's how rookie heroes tend to do. Oh, I do like how the first, these first three episodes of Invincible have quickly taught you that his name is not true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. He is an incredibly stout something or another. But he ain't invincible. But he keeps trying to walk up and stop the end of the world, and it keeps beating his ass. Yep. I did enjoy the fact that uh, the Global Guardian. Guardians all of the Globe. Vo- yeah, Guardians of the Globe. They're all voiced by uh, people from The Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah that, that was amusing. That and uh, the team. Team, 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 team. I, like I said, I know nothing about the I'm characters. Like, I was like, man, they put in some work in that name. <laughs> yeah. But, you what? know, you got Adam Eve and then the uh, the dude that throws the uh, explosive stuff. Explode. 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 You know, oh, they're a couple. And then when she goes to the base and the one chick steps out of the shower duplicate. and she went, you yeah, duplicate, and she went there to see her boyfriend. I'm like, oh, he's in there getting busy with one of the other things. And then when she looks in there, <gasps> well, you can hear sucking noises. Yeah. And... <laughs> I'm sitting there going, my God. She she comes, he comes out, and then the other two come out. I just like, it's like, they're not the real one. We're yeah. all the real one. Yeah, in the books, she sees them, but doesn't. they don't know she saw them at first. And she's complaining to him. She's pouring her heart out Invincible, and it's like, you know, I went to the base, and, you know, Rex was with, was with Kate, and there was three of her. And then later on, Kate cheats on Rex in the books, and you have you have Rex almost panel for panel the same shots. It's yeah, kind of funny. Was good. <laughs> I do like the fact that when you see the prison, you see her brother Multipol. Yeah. But yeah, all the so, team team. The, so know, that team. was who that was. Because I know. I assume talking. so. It was an Asian dude. And there was a lot of him. I mean, and. Uh, and you know, truthfully, it just kind of looked like it, hairstyle and all. Anyway, but uh, but yeah, team team always had the kind of funny name, you know, funnily like cheap off the cuff names. Robot. Heck, I, I liked when they were doing the auditions for the new team, and you had some of these guys, you know, some of the act things showing. I'm like, ooh, that's a knockoff of this. Ooh, that's a knockoff of that. Yeah, the the shrinking lady, I don't remember from the books. I did, I did enjoy Monster Girl. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Monster Girl, I loved. I always liked her in the books, though. Like I said off, like I said off mic, I was disappointed that she wasn't chain smoking. I understand why they didn't have her chain smoking, but but she smoked like a freight train in the books. Partly because I think the transformation like, stopped her from doing her any damage. Yeah. And it was kind of a dealing with the stress of her powers, kind of thing. Yeah. Considering every time she uses it, she it makes her younger. 
That's messed up. Yeah, her power definitely had some negatives to it. Because at some point, she's just going to be like, my, qu- my only question to that is if you know that, why the hell would you go and try and try out for a super team where you're going to have to use your powers all the damn time? Yeah, at some point, she's just going to... Because great power comes with great responsibility. Yeah, but that's stupid. Because yeah, at some point, she's just going to have to stay in the monster form and be like, screw it. Yeah. yeah, in the book, I think she, I think her aging was only reversed while she was the monster. Yeah, that, that's that's one of those. Yeah, I just don't turn into the monster anymore. Why? Because I'm already twenty four and I look like I'm ten. Yeah, I think I'm done. The whole time that some bitch comes out, if I'm getting mugged, it's damn sure gonna be personal. It ain't gonna be oh shit. Criminal X is running around now. I got to go now. I got to have diapers because this no. Nope. But uh, nope. now, one thing I've noticed uh, is they are cramming a lot of plot into those first three episodes. I mean, they're compacting stuff. They're, a lot of the plot points they bring up were spaced out. You know, especially like one of the Maulers dying in the third episode. They had popped up a few times before one of them got whacked. It really feels like they're trying to trim out like. They're trimming out as much as they can, but that's problematic because a lot of Invincible's, like, growth in controlling himself comes in a lot of the storylines that aren't plot-relevant. Uh, like, a lot of the filler stuff with him getting a little bit better with his powers, getting a little more understanding of how to do things. Which, you know, the pacing on TV shows has got to be a little different, I understand. But, yeah. But, like, you haven't had the storyline where, where somebody is blowing up his classmates. Which is one of the early storylines in the book. It it may be one of the things that okay, we don't know if we're going to get a second or third season of this. We're going to get as much of a cohesive story as we can. Then, if we get renewed for like a second and third season, we'll go back and cover some of these. But we'll you know change up how it happened a little bit. Yeah, that's quite possible. And some stuff in in these first three, some stuff is happening in a different order. You know. Yeah, and it's Kirkman. He's going to do it just like he did The Walking Dead. He's going to throw the shit up in the air. And yeah. yeah. That, way, that way, if you read the book, you ain't sitting there going, this is this, this is this, this is this, yeah. this is this, this is this. I'm like Taylor. I like the fact that they kept Mark's origin. You know, that first episode, you know, is is pretty much the first few issues of Invincible. It covered, you know, his origins covered pretty much the same. Yeah, I, I did like that, you know, you know, kid that's supposed to be born with powers and they hadn't manifested yet. It's like, you know, he goes yeah. out, matron, going out to throw out the trash, struggles with that first bag, goes to sling the thing, and then it just keeps flying. And I liked how it was it the second or third episode, but it finally lands and hits that dude. Like, damn, he's over in England. That shit sailed a while. And, and I liked in the one thing when him and his dad are playing uh, pitch, <laughs> throwing it around the plane, yeah. throwing it around the plane. Yeah, that. And his learning to fly. That was funny. I like the whole analogy about trying to pee your pants on purpose. Yeah. But uh I like the fact that hell his dad is essentially super J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. <laughs> it's like my God. It's bad enough that he looks like J. Jonah, then they went and got live action J. Jonah's voice yeah. doing it. His his dad is literally super J. Jonah Jameson. But, you know, go find Spider Man and teach him about his middle and yeah. Back back in the early days of the book. In like the letter pages and online, people talk about you know if they ever did a live action movie, they wanted Tom Selleck to play him. You know, to play him man. Which that far back would have worked. Tom's probably a little old for it now, but yeah, yeah. The uh, uh, last yeah. thing I want to mention though is with the with the Flaxian attacks, you really get to see more, more and like definitively what Omni Man is. Yeah. No, the Flaxen was the the little aliens that had the time issue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they would age. Yeah. That when uh, when they popped up, and then after a certain period of time, they started getting. Oh, I'm like, the hell is going on? Are they clones? And yeah, I, I was sitting there basically. Oh, it's the Martians from World War. I thought they were getting sick and dying, and they were. Oh, they get old. I'm yeah. Like, oh, okay. In the books, yeah. the first time you see them is not the first time they've attacked. Omni Man is familiar with them. Oh, okay. So when he does what he does, it's basically they just done got on his last goddamn nerve. Kinda, yeah. Because there've been there've been a few attacks. 
because they because you have a phase in there where they where Omni Man uh, I think he's talking about it. It's been a while since I read the book. They basically he ends the invasions by finding the generator that's protecting them from that effect and taking it out, and that's when they'll start aging. And then as they progress, you know, then they get the thing where you know it's you know basically where they're individually protected or whatever. And I think that's when he because the trick is you know they'll they'll leave for a week, few weeks, a few months, our time. But it's been years and years, their time. Yeah. So every time they come back, their tech is, is more advanced, which they kind of cover in the show. So yeah, him going in and finishing them off was basically, well, not exactly finishing them off, but, you know, going in and, and, and wrecking shop, you know, was him basically going, okay, they're getting to, they're, they're getting to the level that it's actually going to become difficult to keep taking them out. Got to go put my foot down. Stone Age with yeah, that, that's what I was like. Papa Spank. I like how his mom handled. You know, Mark's all freaked out. Daddy, oh, uh, another world. Oh, okay. That's Tuesday. Yeah, that's yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, that was her in the books. And then when he gets home, she's like, you know, you know, he walks in and he a shower, and she has a brief moment of oh, thank God. Yeah, you know, so she was putting on something of a brave face for Mark. But But yeah, I'm enjoying it, especially you know for something that's just kind of new to me. So I can mm-hmm. do it. I'm not, I'm not watching that going. They're doing this. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm like you. I'm not jaded by the fact that you know because it's like The Walking Dead. I knew what the book, the comic book was, but I'd never read any of the yeah, issues. Yeah. And so to me, this is just The Walking Dead, you know. But the only character I don't like is the girl from school. She too goddamn thirsty. The black girl. The oh yeah. Came over, she's too yeah. goddamn thirsty. Like, what kind of, you know, that's goddamn dignity about yourself. I go to a chick's house, the motherfucker leaves me for an hour, I ain't there when she gets back. That's, that's thirsty as hell. Mm-hmm. Do something about yourself. Have some dignity. I <laughs> wonder if some of that is them not wanting to stretch that storyline out too far. So they're just kind of, you know, it's still that like compacting. Uh, but overall, I think, uh, I think it's safe to say we've, we've, we've all been enjoying both of these shows. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to tomorrow because they'll both hit. They hit every Friday. Yeah. Yep. yep. So you know the question is, will it? Will it's like Invincible hit early. Invincible hit actually in late Thursday night last week. Yeah. They dropped it a little early. Mm-hmm. So it's one of the kind of things where I'm I'm kind of sitting here now going, do I want to get up at two o'clock in the morning and see what the hell's up? Because you know. No, just just wake up in the morning and watch them with breakfast. Eh? Yeah. What'd you say? I said I, I said no. Don't get up that early. Just just watch them in the morning. You're an old man. You need your sleep. I suffer from insomnia. A lot of times I'm up two or three. Well, if you just happen to be awake, then sure. It's one of the kind of thing where you know it's like, and if I watch it like that, it can't be spoiled. Yeah, no, that is true. Well, anyway. uh... So yeah, I think we'll probably all be watching some of these tomorrow. Uh, if y'all out there have have seen these shows and have an opinion on it, feel free to drop a comment below the YouTube video or come to our website, thenerdhome.com, and drop a comment. Decide you want to cancel Danny because he doesn't like women. I have no problem with women. Or you could drop us an email at thenerdhome at Gmail. We haven't gotten any emails from anybody. So if you send one, we'll probably read it on the air. Other than that, uh, you know, remember to go to our site and hit our hit our shop. Yeah. Oh, the token millennial will blow my back out. <gasps> He's married. Uh, I'd, I'd have to. I'd, I'd have to get. Out. Yeah, I would have to get permission to do such a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. So anyway, we'll see y'all in a week. I have been your host, the experienced some called Jason, and with me today has been the Todd Father, CDO one one three, the token back blower outer, Tarky. Well, now you're just encouraging it, and we'll see y'all next time. Peace.